I'm immersing myself in pleasure as a way of activating a lot of the work that I'm doing right now. And we have literally a week or six days before we're going to be experiencing the old ancient love festival of Beltang in the wheel of the year. This is a key point when there's a kind of agreement uh, that all cultures have about the way that a season moves in a cycle and that there's a fruition time. There's a an emergence time. There's a visibility and we're right in the middle of it. We're a week before the love festival. And this love festival was always about a night of pleasure before where people would show a different side of themselves, show what it was like to be in reverence to life force itself and the pleasures that they experienced. And if you think about, you know, what gives you pleasure, it may be very different than another person. Even on the simplest level, I know people who don't enjoy massage, who don't want to be touched in that way. I could drench it in. I could <laughs> steep myself in massage for the rest of my life. It's such a deep pleasure touch. And so what we have the opportunity to do right now is see what makes us tick. What is the foundation of pleasure that you experience? And then sprinkling all of that into all the parts of your life. There may be areas that are just cut off and dead. You may not experience pleasure. You may not even see how you could. How could you experience pleasure in business, for instance? And when it flipped for me was when I changed seeing business as it, it being like business or pleasure. And I saw that it was only pleasure. And that even the traditional concept of business it's no longer appropriate to me because this idea of working, even the language of working hard, working is, is old order. When we can step into alignment with our vision, all there is is creation and creation. There may be things that you need to do potently. You need to focus, you need to have attention. And when you're really flowing, you would delegate out all the jobs that you don't really feel pleasure in. That would be an ideal circumstance to work towards at the peak level of your life. But for now, the work to do before this week of pleasure is to take in what is pleasure to you? What does it mean? What does it look like? Is pleasure a spaciousness in the way that you work? Does it mean that you don't do nine to five. You might work better first thing in the morning, for instance. You might work better last thing at night. Everybody will have a different rhythm. Everybody will have a different essence around pleasure. So on the 30th of, well, it's actually next Sunday. So it's one week from now, is the 30th of April. And that is the traditional eve of pleasure. And it's Beltane Eve, where people used to wander into the woods to gather greenery as a symbolic reference to life force, the regenerative life force that we can rely on every year, the earth replenishes. And so it was an honoring of that. They would create green altars. They would create um, beauty in the way that they were, you know, it was all about beauty, aesthetics, decoration, adornment, and they would adorn themselves and make themselves look very beautiful or attractive and go into the woods that night. And there you may have found something juicy. It may have been not the partner that you with. It may be, you know, a whole, it may be a different gender. All of that was part of the night of pleasure that you suddenly had the opportunity for one night only to break your own rules, to break your own rules of conformity to a society. And within that, it may not speak to you on that level, like, hey, you know, I don't want to get a new partner or anything like that. 
that's not really what it's about. It's a, the ability to vision in something different for yourself. The, vi the ability to dream outside of the realms of your normal routine. And when we do that, what happens is there's this incredible alignment with creative force that enables us to start to touch and reach into other things. In my experience this year, I was going about doing my courses um, very much in the cycles that I like working in the spring upswing and the autumn downswell, shall, shall we say. And out of seemingly nowhere, I suddenly got it into my head that it would be an amazing pleasure for me to create my first product. It would be exciting. And I don't experience this like oh, it's hard work, like I must go and research all these areas that I don't know. And it's true, I don't know. I don't know about, you know, trading standards, um, ingredients, how you get them tested, all of that kind of thing. I don't know about that. But it became a pleasure to just stretch and research and go into this whole realm. The product that I'm bringing to the table is very much about pleasure. And so I'm experiencing the business of it as pleasurable. And on the 30th of April, next Sunday, in England, between 10 and 12 in the morning, Sydney time would be 7 to 9 in the evening. Sam Briatico and I are doing a, a workshop, a mastermind, an experience, a two-hour experience all about pleasure. And our intention is to open you up to your own pleasure and let's see what that causes in the influence that you have in your business, your life, your love life, your relationships, in your beingness, all of it. And it's called the Queen's Pleasure because I actually am working on very much a, a, an archetype of the Queen for everybody. It can also include men because within it, the queen archetype is very different than the king. They do different roles. They're still you at a heightened state, you at, a, at an elevated state of mind, you at an elevated expression, but king and queen are different and they're equal, equal and different and both potent. So the information for you to ha have a look at is, it's called the queen's pleasure, link is on my bio. Tickets are $44 or £35, and you can receive the recordings for the rest of